College of Banking and Finance Studies and Omani Finance, Finance Professionals. Before I begin with, I wish to play a video to introduce the Digital Learning Hub. the single sign-in platform for members and students. To facilitate knowledge at ease, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India introduces the Digital Learning Hub. This e-learning platform helps ICAI students and members to connect on the same platform. Powered with an integrated learning management system, Digital Learning Hub has a lot to offer. It provides opportunities for users to learn, unlearn and relearn. ICAI's Digital Learning Hub enables users to access online learning resources, gain important insights and collaborate with their community members. This learning hub also helps ICAI members in continuous professional education and earn their CPE credit hours. The collaborative and feedback pedagogy of the hub provides an opportunity to share knowledge and augment their skills with features like highlight, bookmarking, add notes and search through the content. Digital Learning Hub revives the learning ecosystem and enhances learning capabilities and retention. Enroll yourself today and be a part of this e-learning initiative. Now I request Mr. Ramanta Prabhu, to Chairman IC Muscat Chapter to welcome to have welcome address. Thank you very much, uh, Sajivji. Salam Alaikum. Good morning. Namaste. On behalf of the Muscat Chapter, and College of Banking and Financial Studies. It gives me great pleasure to greet you all invitees, guests, members of the Muscat chapter, members of the overseas chapter, ICA leaders, and my fellow man managing committee members for this virtual launching and inauguration of Digital Learning Hub, ICA access to College of Banking and Financial Studies and Omani professionals in Sultanate of Oman. Today, under the patronage of our Honorable Chief Guest, His Excellency Tar Salam Alamri, Executive President of Central Bank of Oman, which is adding vibrancy to this historic event. We, the members of the Muscat chapter, also welcome our guest of honors, His Excellency Manu Mawarji, Indian Ambassador to Oman, CA Atul Kumar Guptaji, President ICAI, Dr. Kalpan Mohammad Albarwani, Chairman, College of Banking and Financial Studies and the board member, Vice President, Investments and Market Operations, Central Bank of Oman, CA Niyar Jambusariyaji, Vice President, ICAI, CA Aniket Yastalati ji, Central Council Member, ICAI, CA Nishit Sir, Keynote Speaker, Mr. Anis Lavati, Acting Dean, College of Banking and Financial Studies, Oman. We also welcome our past chairpersons, CA Davis Kalukaran ji, our founder chairperson of Muscat Chapter, CA Anuradha Venkat Krishnan ji, C.A. Ashwini ji, C.A. Asta Rangan ji, C.A. Mubin ji, C.A. Bhavani Prasad ji. Life is a learning and a journey of continuous learning. There is no end for learning. Every day is a new challenge, new scope, new scope for living. In this part of the learning journey, with all of us contributions and the efforts of our past year persons, past managing committee members of Muscat chapter and our present managing committee of the Muscat chapter of ICAA on this day, there is a great milestone is achieved. Yes, dear one and all, I would like to bring you to all attention that this is one of the very first and historic events happening today between ICAA India, ICAA Muscat chapter and College of Banking and Financial Studies where 
wherein all our efforts have been successfully paid in fulfilling one of the oman's vision and the need in connecting oman and ica india in capacity building for omani professionals and accounting professions in sultanate of oman it is my honor to congratulate ica leadership ca atil kumar gupta ji and his whole team for this great gesture of providing virtual access of digital learning hub for omani nationals with virtual learning through C college of banking and financial studies we are grateful to cbfs for their continued support and in this new progress teaching through virtual digital hub with this oman and india bilateral partnership in the field of knowledge economy it has set a new milestone and made an initiative by the icai in the middle east to connect people to people connect thereby individuals prospers family prospers community prospers and all the stake stakeholders will prosper muska chapter ica also facilitated the initiative to set up public accounting and oversight oversight body and thereby create world class omani chartered accountants in the region which will go a long way in transforming and upskilling upskilling the omani human capital we also thank his excellency tar salam alamri and his team for his support to the chapter and look forward to the continuous patronage to the muska chapter icai we also thank dr kalfan mohammed albarwani and his team for the sponsor, spontaneous support to the muska chapter over the years and look forward to the continuous support as the journey continues we also have with us our learner speaker ca nishit sethi ji the managing director subtitle systems limited very learner speaker who will enhance us our knowledge through the digital accounting and robotic automation process as we have start the new age of accounting once again welcome each one of you to to this historic launching event of icai digital learning hub access to college of banking and financial studies and wish you all happy learning stay connected with muska chapter look forward to your continued support please take precautions stay safe without further i do i hereby hand over the proceedings to ca sajeev ji to take this forward over to you sajeev ji thank you ca ramanand prabhu now i request ca asa rengan to introduce hc tahir al mam hello a very warm good good morning to everybody hope you can hear me yes 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 uh, i am pleased to uh, uh, to introduce the, his excellency tahir salim al amri he is the executive president of the central bank of oman he has played pivotal role in government sector with his dynamic roles in ministry of finance and oil and gas revenue services he has also worked as deputy ceo for oifc before joining the cbo he has served on the board of various private and public companies we are thankful to his excellency for joining the event thank you very much and welcome sir now i request ramanand prabhu to welcome uh, hc tahir salim al mamri and offer a floor bouquet ahalan uh, ahalan wasalan ustad we welcome you for this uh, virtual ahalan. event thank you thank you yes if i may uh, oh, address the gathering uh, to to uh, to friends uh, your excellency yes thank you for the virtual bouquet it's really nice <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you your excellency thank uh, you yeah, yeah. it's 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 different times nowadays but uh, you know uh, it's very interesting times and that's part of what you are trying to do here which is the learning uh, uh, part of it uh, i hope uh, everybody can hear me very clearly uh, and i would like to uh, uh, address uh, this uh, prestigious gathering uh, his excellency ambassador manu mahavar uh, indian ambassador to uh, oman uh, dr khalfan al barwani chairman of cbfs uh mr ramananda uh, prabhu chairman of icia uh, muscat chapter mr ratul kumar gupta president of icia and uh, we really glad that he could join us uh, today 
Mr. Nihar Niranjan Jambusariya, Vice President of ICIA, Mr. Anis Elawati, Acting Dean of CBFS, Mr. Aniket Talati, Mr. Nishit Seth, and other dignitaries present here today. Uh, thank you, Asha, also for, for the introduction. I really appreciate that. It's my pleasure to be with this August gathering in the virtual webinar hosted by ICIA Muscat Chapter. At the outset, let me thank and congratulate ICIA for launching its digital learning hub in Oman and providing access to CBFS. This online learning facility will allow and encourage the Omani professionals to build and enhance their skills in a self-paced manner in the area of accounting and finance. I am fully aware that the Digital Learning Hub of ICIA has achieved new milestones in knowledge building by expanding its outreach using technological advances and virtual platforms. This has helped, this has helped ICIA to design and implement more focused courses, keeping in view the target audience. The platform has emerged as a single source of knowledge and central repository of learning material for members and students. The College of Banking and Financial Studies, CBFS, in Oman is the leading center for learning in the area of banking and finance. Access to Digital Learning Hub of ICIA, ICAI will further expand its horizon. It will enable CBFS to impart its learning courses more effectively and to wider target groups. The collaborative participation with ICAI will also facilitate the CBFS to incorporate its courses, the latest developments in the area of finance and, and accounting. The COVID-19 pandemic has changed the life significantly and more so for the education sector. Due to the social distancing requirements, the traditional classroom approach to, to impart education and training is not feasible in the current environment. The use of technology and virtual platforms has, however, turned out to be a savior at this difficult time. In fact, the pandemic has given a new opportunity in the form of virtual classrooms where the numbers of students and trainees are not constrained by the availability of physical space. In this uncertain and tumultuous time, accounting and finance professionals have to keep pace with the time. The financial sector is expected to play a bigger and a crucial role in uh, in engineering the sustaining in engineering and sustaining the recovery process in the medium to long term. The economy in general and the financial sector in particular will need a larger number of qualified professionals in this process. The collaboration of ICIA, ICAI, and CBFS will go a long way in increasing the number of well-qualified professionals. And accounting in accounting and finance in Oman. I don't want to take longer. There is an eminent speaker scheduled to deliver the keynote address. Let me again congratulate, congratulate both uh, ICAI and CBFS for making the digital learning hub available to Omani finance professionals. I wish them all success in the endeavor. I thank the organizers for inviting me on this occasion. I am sure the participants will benefit immensely from this webinar. With these words, I inaugurate the ICAI Digital Learning Hub access to CBFS and Nomani finance professionals. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you. Now I request uh, to launch formally the ICAI Digital Learning Hub. Learning Hub. Access to CNFS and Omani Financial Professionals in Oman. How to log in MRA MOU so far. Open URL learning.icai.org. Click on other stakeholders button. Click on MRA MOU so far. Click on Login. Enter your login ID and password. Then click on Login button. Click on Highlighted Area. Click on Highlighted Area. Click on Launch button to start the course. 
The curriculum modules can be viewed on expanding the table of contents. Click on arrow to go to the next slide. Click on highlighted area to play webinar video. Click on full screen icon to enter full screen. Click the next button. Press escape button to exit full screen. Click the highlighted icon to view the menu. Click the close button. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency, for the formal uh, inauguration and launching of uh, ICA Digital uh, Learning Hub. Now I request uh, C. Anit Aniket Talati to uh, you know address the gathering. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chairman, His Excellency Tahir Salim Alamri, uh, Honorable President of ICA Atul Gupta Ji, Vice President Nihar Jambusariya Ji, His Excellency uh, Manu Manohar Ji. Uh, all the honorable guests, Dr. Kalpan, past chairman, uh, representatives from the uh, CBFS. It's a honor and pleasure for me as convener of the Digital Learning Hub Committee of ICAI to be present here. And my sincere gratitude and thanks to His Excellency Tahir Salim al -Amari for launching this facility, which has been an excellent success for our students and members and now will be available to Omani finance professionals through the CBFS through our chapter and to all finance professionals. His Excellency, I can only say that our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji gave a carry on call that Vasudeva Kutembakam, which is the culture of India. The world is a family. And in the same spirit, our Honorable President Atul Gupta ji and our Honorable Vice President Nihar Jambu Sarya ji have believed that it is the role of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India being the second largest accounting body in the world and a standard setter par excellence that we must share the knowledge, the expertise that is there with ICAI with the world. And it is with this initiative, this belief, sir, that today the digital learning hub, which is being used by all finance professionals is in, in India and other countries also will now be available to Omani professionals. Uh, His Excellency, I had a small presentation uh, to share on this, but due to the paucity of time, I will restrict my comments as I would like to have our Honorable President and Vice President address us. But I can only share with you, sir, as convener of this group, that it is a platform which is going to be available, which will share all the relevant content, not just relating to accounting and finance, but the future of accounting which lies in technology, that is digital accounting, digital assurance, forensic technologies and techniques and also relating to all the latest developments that are happening in the audit domain using IT. They will be made available to all your finance professionals. It is, I believe, a step in the direction of ICI partnering with all nations across the world and leading and providing our intellectual property to the world. Uh, His Excellency and all members, I'm proud to share that this platform has been developed by ICI along with the largest IT companies of India. It's a unique platform, which is device agnostic. Doesn't matter which device you are using. It is operating system agnostic. You can log in from a phone, from a tablet, from a computer, from any operating system, and you will still have the same user experience. Um, just in terms of the content that is being there, we have over a million people who are using the content on this digital learning platform who are registered users. And I'm extremely glad to share that over 50 content has been developed on various different topics and we are in the constant process of evolving the content which is going to be relevant not only to Oman, to the world, but also ensure that finance uh, professionals stay up to date with technological changes as well as technical changes. Uh, with these words, I am grateful to our Honorable President and Vice President, sir, for giving me this opportunity as convener, appointing me the convener of digital learning platform and I can assure everyone in Oman that not just the content developed in India, but if there is any content which is relevant to Oman and you would like it to be hosted on this platform, our team at the Digital Learning Hub will be more than happy to associate and, uh, and help you in ensuring that personalized, effective content can be there on Digital Learning Hub and it can truly become a success and resounding success for all finance professionals uh, across Oman. Uh, with these words, I thank all of you for this opportunity and wish all the participants, happy learning. Thank you. Thank you, CA Anikit Talati ji. Uh, now, may I request uh, Ashwini, uh, CA Ashwini Shavrikar to 
formally introduce and welcome H. E. Manu Mahavar, sir. Thank you, C. S. Ajit. Uh, Your Excellency uh, Shri Manu Mahavar ji, it is my great pleasure to welcome you today on our event. Um, Shri Manu Mahavar ji assumed charge as the post of Ambassador of India to the Sultanate of Oman on 21st of August 2018. He joined the Indian Foreign Service in 1996. He has served in diplomatic missions in Moscow 1998 to 2001 and 2008 to 2011 and in Geneva 2005 to 2008. At headquarters, he has served as desk officer for Nepal 2001 to 2005 and director in prime minister's office 2011 to 2014. He also headed establishment division 2014 to 2015 and UN political division April 2015 to September 2015 in the Ministry of External Affairs. Prior to his present assignment, he was head of America's division from October 15 to August 18. Shri Mahavarji was born in Damantri, Chhattisgarh. He is B.Tech in Electrical Engineering from IIT Delhi. He speaks Hindi, English and Russian languages. His wife is also an Indian Foreign Service officer and he's accompanied with his son and daughter. We are very glad to have uh, His Excellency Shri Manu Mahavarji. He has been uh, always a continuous support to the Muscat chapter of ICAI in all of our endeavors, as well as on behalf of the Indian community in Oman, I can say that he has been a support and uh, the support to all the Indian community in uh, Oman. And uh, uh, we are glad to have him here amongst us for today's event. Uh, I welcome you, uh, sir, Your Excellency, with a virtual flower bouquet and request you to address the gathering. Thank you, Ashwiniji. It's my great pleasure. Your Excellency, uh, Tahir Salim Al Amri, Executive President, Central Bank of Oman, CA Atul Kumar Gupta, President, ICAI, Dr. Khalfan Al Barwani, Chairman, CBFS. C.A. Ramanand Prabhu, Chairperson, Muscat Chapter of ICAI, other guests of honor and dignitaries, dear friends. It is a great pleasure for me to join all of you for this important event, uh, the virtual launch and inauguration of ICAI Digital Learning Hub, access to CBFS and Omani finance professionals. Ever since my arrival in Oman uh, over two years back, I have been participating various high quality events that the Muscat chapter of ICAI has been organizing. And this has continued even during the COVID period. Muscat chapter has been very actively supporting Omani and Indian finance professionals. And it has also played a significant role in the promotion of India-Oman economic partnership. Its efforts have been recognized both in India and in Oman. In all my interactions, Omani authorities have been appreciative of efforts of ICI, as we also just heard. And Muscat chapter has been just as best performing overseas chapter of ICI for five years in a row, including securing the first position in last two years. In recent uh, years, ICI has stepped up its efforts towards developing capacity within Oman for training of Omani professionals. Uh, a number of proposals, ideas have been put forward, including an initiative to set up public company accounting oversight board in Oman. And these initiatives are in complete sync with the focus of government of Oman under His Majesty Sultan Hetham bin Tariq for human resource development, which will be a key factor in the realization of Oman's vision 2040 and its desire to become a knowledge economy. Today's launch, today's uh, access to this virtual learning hub is a major milestone as we heard. And I would like to compliment, congratulate all those who have made this uh, possible. The Indian Embassy has always been supportive of ICI Muscat chapters efforts and we will continue to do so in future. I would also like to acknowledge the role of CBFS, which has been an ideal partner for ICI Muscat chapter in its journey. I would like to thank Dr. Khalfan Al Barwani for his leadership and constant support. We are indeed honored to have with us our chief guest today, 
His Excellency Tahir Salim Al Amri, Executive President of Central Bank of Oman. I had the privilege of knowing him soon after I arrived in Muscat, and he has always been a very strong pillar of support for Indian financial entities working in Oman. We also deeply appreciate his deep commitment to further develop India-Oman economic partnership. I would like to thank you, Excellency, for all your efforts and support. I would also like to take this opportunity to once again reaffirm India's strong desire to further expand and develop its strategic partnership with Oman. We believe that India can be an ideal partner for Oman in all key priority areas that have been identified under Vision 2040 and its vision to become a digital a knowledge economy. I would like to thank the Muscat chapter for inviting me to this special event and I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, for the kind words. Now, may I request C.A. Sanil Varghis to introduce President C.A. Adil Kumar Guttaji. Okay, okay, okay. May I request, in case Vice President can speak uh, before that. Yeah, sure, sure, sir. Sure. Uh, I request CA Nihar Jambu Sariaji to, yeah. uh, to speak. Uh, I'll, I'll invite uh, Sanil Vargis. Yeah, Sanil Vargis to introduce and welcome Nihar Jambu Sariaji. Welcome, sir. Uh, CA Nihar Jambu Saria is Vice President of ICA for the year 2021 wherein he is currently serving for a for the third consecutive term that is uh, from 2013 to 16 2016 to 19 and the current term of 2019 to 2022 he is qualified as a chartered accountant in 1984 and was in practice for nearly 27 years he is vice chairman of all standing committees including executive finance and examination committees he is also ex officio member of all stand, non standing committees and joint editor of ICA journal, The Chartered Accountant. He is director of ICAI Research Wing, ICA Accounting Research Foundation, and Extensible Business Reporting Language India. Welcome, sir, to address us, address the gathering. Thank you. Sanilji. Yeah, please accept the yes, our e bouquet too. The virtual bouquet. Thank you. Thank you for the nice bouquet. Uh, and it's a pleasure to receive it virtually. Uh, it also promotes the green initiative of various governments all over the world. Uh, His Excellency uh, Tahir Salim Al Amri, today's chief guest and executive president of CBO. His Excellency Manu Mahavar, uh, Indian ambassador to Muscat. Our president, uh, CA Atul Guptaji, uh, chairman of the Muscat chapter, CA Ramanan Prabhu all the dignitaries from CBFS and CBO and my council colleagues and all the listeners. I think today it's a great, it's a matter of great pleasure that the digital learning hub which the ICI started developing last year is being put open to the Muscat chapter its members, CBFS members, CBO members, and the finance professionals in Oman will find it very useful. Aniket has already explained the various features of this digital learning hub. And I would like to add that apart from the subjects on technology, finance, 
the general audit which are covered i think it has certain unique features like you can attend this session and check for yourself how much you have grasped or understood it has got even questions available at the end of this session and certain very distinguished features are available particularly the search options the bookmark and many other features which are available will be very helpful and we will be very happy to receive suggestions from you even the subjects which relate to you more and you want to cover the faculties in india would be happy to cover those subjects at present you may find that some of the subjects are on texas and which may be directly related to india barring those subjects i think now all subjects are common and after the pandemic i think time has come when we need to collaborate with each other share the knowledge with each other and world has truly become global village i don't think territorial boundaries are relevant for sharing knowledge and interacting with each other so this initiative i am sure will bring us closer and in future our ties will become stronger with this hub and many other initiatives that we may initiate for the future his excellency manu ji very rightly put that indian economy and women economy would also like to be connected and uh, relate to each other in this endeavor also the institute will be happy to contribute in whatever best way we can thank you so much for inviting and let us hope for a new beginning to be made with this dlh available to you thank you Uh, allow me first to apologize you, uh, if you don't mind. We were disconnected. All my colleagues at CBFS, along with myself, were disconnected for about five minutes, I believe. And please accept my apologies. Uh, sir, before you leave, can you uh, address the the audience? Uh, before yeah. that, I'll uh, ask Mr. Jim to introduce Dr. Kalfan Al Barwani, and I will. address the audience before you leave thank you sajeev uh, assalam alaikum dr kalfan i'm so happy to welcome and introduce uh, dr kalfan mohammad al barwani he is having more than 14 year experience as uh, economist in central bank of oman presently he is vice president investment and market operations of cbo dr kalfan is also the chairman of the board of directors of cbfs he is a phd holder from Cl 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 claremont graduate university this few words let me welcome mr kalpan with the virtual bouquet welcome to you sir thank you uh thank you uh, thank you very much and uh, uh first and foremost uh, what i would like to do is basically echo the sentiment of his excellency uh, tahir al amri uh, on what he said i will add a couple of things here in my two or three minute uh, brief uh, dear mr chairman uh, Thank you for the invitation to this critical webinar conference on digital learning by ICAI. I'm honored to be on this platform today, uh, along with the excellencies, distinguished officials, and members. Uh, let me say at the outset uh, that we at CBFS, College of Banking and Financial Studies, are privileged to be part of your global chapters since 2008. That our staff and students alike. have benefited from this association the aim by icai to provide continuous professional education is truly commendable as most of us as most of us found out that sometimes traditional education and degrees are not enough to grow in our careers and more importantly to further contribute to our jobs and responsibilities If I may, uh, as far as Oman is concerned, uh, besides everything you have been doing here, the need of the hour is to train professionals and those interested in the field of taxation and blockchain technology. I will conclude by commending the Institute for quickly adapting in teaching through virtual and digital learning during the pandemic environment, and thank you. for the access to various courses you provide to cbfa staff and students as well as nominated staff 
of the Central Bank of Oman. Thank you very much. It has been an honor. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kalfam, for your kind words. Mm -hmm. uh, may I request Mr. Sanil Vargis to introduce uh, CA Adil Kumarji, uh, our ICA president. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's always a pleasure to introduce our president uh, for a function. Uh, CA Atul Kumar Gupta has been elected as president of the Institute of Chartered Accounts of India for the term 2021 on uh, 12th February 2020. He served the profession for the past two decades. He joined, or rather, he was elected to the Central Council of ICA in 2013 and he continued as a member of the council for two consecutive terms from 2016 to 19 and from 19 2019 onwards he got elected as vice president in february 2019 for the term 2019-20 he heads various uh, he's chairman of various committees as the president welcome sir to address us and please accept the floral bouquets on behalf of the master chapter. I now I request uh, CA Davis Kalukaran sir to welcome of formally CA Adil Kumar Gupta. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, Davis Kalukan, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, if you can hear Hello. Me. Yeah. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah, I, I, think, I think I just now I unmuted. Okay. Yeah. Good morning, everyone, and good morning, Excellencies. It's a great opportunity to be here. Uh, on this auspicious occasion of uh, the launching of the Digital Learning Hub, which is opening up a plethora of opportunities for the Omani accountants and for the members at large for their continued professional education programs. And this all comes at a very nominal cost. And then you know, I should uh, congratulate our management committee members for a great work being done uh, to launch this program. And I look forward to more and more from the chapter also. Uh, dear Atul Kumarji, it's a great honor uh, to welcome you onto this uh, program. And you have been always very considerate for uh, Muscat chapter. I have, we have seen you a couple of times in uh, Muscat also. And I have the uh, pleasure to welcome you to this program. Sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Davis and uh, Sanilji. The his Excellency uh, Tahir Salim Al Amreji, uh, the Executive Chairman of uh, Central Bank of Oman, uh, our own uh, very uh, uh, distinguished personality uh, from India, His Excellency Manu Mahavarji, uh, the Chairman of uh, CBFS Board, uh, Dr. Kalfan uh, Al Barwaniji, the Executive uh, uh, Dean of uh, the acting Dean of uh, CBFS, uh, Anis Mosa Alwatiji, uh, the Honorable Vice President ICAI, C. N. Nihar Jambusariaji, my council colleague from India, who is the convener of uh, the Digital Learning Hub, C. A. Aniket Talatiji, the very respected chairman and the entire management committee of uh, Muscat chapter under the able leadership of C. A. Ramanan Prabhuji the former chairperson of the Muscat chapter, Madam Ashwin Savaragarji, and all the colleagues from the CBFS. At the outset, I pray the Almighty for the well-being of each one of you and the family members and team in this COVID situation. And uh, as rightly mentioned by His Excellency Tahir Salim Al Amriji, that it is a new normal of our life. And I, uh, as I will take the uh, clue from the uh, discussion and deliberation from our colleagues that uh, in this new normal, when everything is becoming a, a kind of a lockdown situation is there and we are all moving towards the digital and the virtual mode. Uh, it, I'm very happy that uh, today 
the digital learning hub which is providing the very important services to the members and the students of uh, icai today the reach has uh, uh, has taken us to the cbfs and as being rightly mentioned by the honorable vice president and aniket ji i just wish to on uh, update uh, i share with the his excellency tahir alim al amri ji and uh, the cbfs colleague that the the digital learning hub which is being explained by the aniket talati ji is actually our 24 by 7 our learning opportunity available anytime anywhere access is available for not only the subject which have the global importance for example the ifrs the for example the i will say the blockchain technology the robotic process automation artificial intelligence data analytics but also in the times to come it will be our endeavor and it will be our pleasure to offer the courses related to the oman uh, uh, economy as well we are aware that very soon the oman vat will be applicable from the 1st of april or the nearby date and i will urge the honorable our my council colleague aniket talati ji and along with the muscat chapter that even for the training for the finance professionals related to the ua uh, this oman vat uh, should also be provided through this unique platform i am aware that uh, the cbfs and the ici has a long history of relationship i'm thankful to uh, thankful to the cbfs for providing all the patronage to the our muscat chapter from since uh, 2008 and uh, even for the one or the other initiative and even i visited uh, a year back and it was a very cordial uh, meeting with not only cbfs but various regulator at the oman that how we can support how we can collaborate among each other and see that how the relationship can uh, be taken to the next level and that's why we discuss not only this kind of a engagement of providing the digital learning hub or the other knowledge based material uh, from the ici but also in institutionalizing the setup of the oman institute of chartered accountants the public oversight body and even for the center of excellence i visited i discussed even because we are the partner of the ministry of external affairs for the itech that is the for the training of the uh, global professionals in india i invite here uh, from this platform to the honorable his excellency the tahir salim almari ji and dr kalfan ji that in case any type of training which is required even in the times to post covid situation for a physical program physical training program for the senior officials of the oman in center of excellence of ici we will be pleased to uh, 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 invite all of you uh, in india as being i just mentioned that not only for this aspect related to the digital learning hub even if we can provide any support in relation to the come upcoming the oman vat for the institute setting up the institute of uh, uh, chartered accountants oman or even for the public accounts oversight body it will be our endeavor and pleasure to participate and support the oman uh, government friends you are aware that the institute of chartered accountants of india having a rich history of more than 72 years and with the more than 400000 members more than 700000 st uh, students today the ici is officially available in more than 42 countries of the world and it will be always our endeavor to provide that kind of a international experience to our colleagues who will be joining this digital learning hub uh, either may, it may be the cbfs colleague or it may be the other financial professionals who will be getting a lot of uh, knowledge Uh, met knowledge based material through this digital learning hub i am very happy to be the part of this ceremony and i also convey my sincere thanks to the his excellency manu mahavar ji for providing all the patronage and support to the institute of chartered accountants of india and specifically the muscat chapter uh, we are here to support we are here to uh, assist any initiative by the government and i'm just share wish to share with you that recently it's a proud privilege for me as a atul gupta and icai that now the icai representative uh, as a atul gupta uh, like we are there in the board of the ifac as well so any initiative in relation to the ifac or even the xbrl even uh, the icai will be very pleased to participate and provide any assistance to the oman professionals thank you very much thank you sir for your kind words now i request uh, ca jim joseph to formally uh, welcome Mr. Anis Lalawati, Musa Lalawati. Assalamualaikum, sir. 
Mr. Anis Musa Lawati is the acting dean and also the assistant dean of the academic affairs at CBFS. He has over 35 years of experience in teaching and training in Oman, UAE, and Jordan. He had previously held many key positions, including Deputy Dean of Oman College of Management and Technology, Director of Training and Learning at Dubai Institute of HRM, Acting Director General at IBFS, Director of Training of Institute of Public Administration. Uh, he did his BA at Rollins College in Florida, USA, and MBA from Yarmouk University in Jordan. Uh, with these few words, let me uh, welcome you, sir. Kindly accept our uh, virtual bouquet. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jim. Thank you so much for introducing me. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, a few words on this occasion. Uh, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, dear colleagues from ICAI, Muscat Chapter, uh, thank you for this uh, memorable day and uh, prestigious occasion. Uh, I think uh, ICAI, uh, Muscat Chapter, and CBFS have been, uh, uh, you know, associated uh, to each other for a very long time, uh, more than 10 years. And uh, I think after all the good wishes that have been uh, expressed uh, earlier this morning, uh, our role now is to convert these wishes into a, a, a realistic plan uh, where we can identify the need uh, and the requirements of uh, the banking and finance sector in Oman and benefit from uh, you know from this facility uh, where we can have uh, something which is very much relevant uh, and and uh, recent uh, to to the local market thank you very much thank, thank you, you sir thank for you your thank very much uh, uh, ustadi and uh, we look forward to your uh, support as a muscat chapter and this uh, new journey as we you know uh, launch the digital learning hub and uh, and look forward to working together and collaborate you in future also thank you very much uh, inshallah inshallah thank you so much thank you, thank you for your i i now request uh, uh, mr nader nasser al rawawi to say, say a few words on this occasion being the board member of omani chartered accountant association Another. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Prabhu. And uh, the thanks goes to also His Excellency Taha Al Amri uh, and His Excellency Manu Mahavar, uh, Indian Ambassador, and also the uh, CA uh, Indian Chapter President for uh, this uh, very good initiative that uh, Oman is. Uh, uh, emerging with the world in terms of digital learning and this is not uh, uh, what I can say it's not a new thing for ICA what they introduce to the Omani profession especially they have been as Mr. Anis, uh, Dr. Anis said uh, more than 10 years in collaboration with Oman and uh, recently we have met uh, with the Ministry of uh, Commerce and Industry with the Indian chapter uh, initiating the first uh, oversight board that will really help Omanis to uplift the profession in terms of audit and accounting. And this profession is, uh, was uh, a bit lacking in the, few, in the past, but the way forward uh, as uh, the Vision 2040 and uh, all uh, government uh, officials are, are really asking for Omanis to uplift their knowledge and expertise and skills in the profession of accounting and finance. And this is uh, not uh, new what uh, Indian chapter is doing. They have been doing a lot for Oman since they have stepped foot in Oman. And this shows that they are not uh, treating Oman as only their uh, uh, allies, but also partnership in developing Oman's future. And thank you very much, uh, you all, for this uh, uh, interesting, I, I say, interesting tool that will enable Omanis to learn from all, 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 uh, all, all, all places. And this will really in, enhance the profession of accounting and the new way of accounting of digitalization. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ustad uh, Nader uh, Nasser Al Rawawi, and look forward to your uh, continuous support to the Muscat chapter. Over to you, Sajiv. No, I request. 
now i request ca nalini subramanian to introduce uh, nishit ca nishit sir a speaker of the day madam you are on the mute sorry 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 a very good afternoon to all the distinguished guests and invitees uh, nishit sheth is a chartered accountant information systems auditor master trainer for big data analytics and a certified technical support professional on big data analytics he is managing director of substratal solutions private limited and advisor of leap forward leap frog academy he has represented india at the international standards organization as a voting member and also a special invitee to the inter ministerial committee on cyber education and awareness sets uh, core competencies are in the areas of cyber forensic audit automation yes, yes. fraud detection revenue assurance and controlling mon control monitoring solution development with these words i welcome mr nishit sheth to this uh, august audience madam uh, may i request prabhu ji that in case our honorable chief guest sir and uh, guest of honor wish to leave uh, so you may uh, propose a uh, word of thanks to okay. them Uh, so that because the state he, will take a lot of time, like uh, he will. Be <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before and I think... before 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 we hand it over to um, C. N. Nishit Seth, we will have a felicitation, sir. Now I request yeah. uh, uh, C. Atul Kumar Gupta ji to uh, facilitate uh, His Excellency Tahir Salam Alamri, Executive President of Central Bank of Pune. For this also, you must have planned something, Ramanand Prabhu ji. We are. I am in India. Sir is there in Oman. <laughs> it's a pure. It's, it's, it's a virtual world, sir. It's a virtual. Uh, yeah, virtual command is there. Yeah, command is there with Mr. Ramanand ji to you. So, I will convey uh, my sincere thanks to His Excellency Tahir uh, Salim Al Amre for gracing this occasion and uh, for all the support and patronage, sir. and uh, we will be uh, uh, there to support any initiative of the government, oman government as a ici uh, please just feel that we are a call away for you sir uh, thank you very much uh, sir i really appreciate it i also appreciate your time i appreciate your collaboration and uh, i think uh, what do you call it uh, cbfs is really uh, you know excited about all of this and they are always hopefully in the forefront of trying to collaborate with the with the best uh, and uh, icai is uh, you know the best uh, and we believe that uh, we will we will really benefit uh, a lot from this uh, that's why i'm i'm just here to support uh, it's 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 of course uh, all your event and this is very important the next step is like mr anis mentioned is to put it into practice and to see how many people are actually using it and how we are uh, benefiting from it i thank you again i really appreciate it and thank you for uh, for everything for inviting me for for listening to me as well and for everything that is virtual uh, and hopefully soon uh, we will see each other in person and we will have all the best uh, events uh, ever uh, inshallah so i thank everybody um, Uh, his excellency ambassador uh, had another commitment so he he messaged me that he has to uh, he has to leave so we appreciate him as well uh, attending uh, i have great respect for him i think i think i am the first one one of the first ones he met and i gave him a, a problem that he solved i i really really uh, what do you call it uh, uh, have high regard for for him as a person as well not just the office uh, and and hopefully we will be able to support you and everybody uh, in the coming future and also if you are, if you allow me i will also uh, leave you to uh, enjoy and benefit from the presentation so thank you very much appreciate it thank you thank, thank, thank you, you very excellency much your excellency thank you all appreciate it thank you now i request our vice president c n ihar jambu said you to facilitate uh, our h e manu manu mahavar ji
it's our pleasure to honor you, uh, His Excellency Manu Mahavirji, uh, and we express our gratitude that today you have uh, come here and graced this occasion as guest of honor. Thank you. Please accept this uh, memento from us. Thank you, sir, for uh, felicitation. Now, uh, I request C. Adar Kumar Gupta ji to fe felicitate uh, Dr. Kalfan Albarwani. <laughs> Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Kalfan Al Barmani ji, and uh, for all your uh, support uh, to the ICI Muscat chapter. And as I mentioned, sir, that uh, this uh, digital learning hub is one of the uh, initiative taken by ICI, where we are support, we are providing the anytime, anywhere access to the entire material being developed by ICI, made beyond the technology, uh, accounting standards, auditing standards, everywhere. But apart from that, sir, if you feel anything, any way we can support the CBFS, maybe the physical training in the times to come, or in this uh, public accounts, uh, public sec this uh, oversight body which we are creating, or otherwise, uh, even uh, I came earlier uh, last occasion and we discussed that uh, uh, even together we can launch certain courses uh, uh, on the one or the other important subject, including the new which is coming in the uh, Oman v VAT or otherwise. So we will be there to support, uh, uh, assist any endeavor of the CBFS. Sir. Thank you very much for sir, uh, sparing your valuable time and joining us. Uh, thank you so much. It's, it's an honor, it's an honor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I, re now I request CA Nihar Jimbo Sereji to uh, felicitate Mr. Anis Musa Lavati, Acting Dean, CBFS. Please uh, bring it on screen. It's our pleasure to felicitate you, uh, Anis Salwati ji, and uh, our gratitude uh, for being guest of honor today and attending this function. Thank you so much. Please accept this memento on our behalf. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it has been. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you so much. Very, very grateful uh, for the invitation, and look forward for uh, uh, new events, new uh, activities to to be conducted and delivered jointly, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. We look forward to working with you, Ustadi. Thank you, thank you. Now I request uh, C. N. Nishit Shet to address the members. Namaskar and very good afternoon to everyone. I hope I'm audible. Yes, yes, Anishit, good to see you. Thank you, thank you, CA Prabhu. And uh, in fact, my warm wishes to everyone on the 50th National Day of Sultanate of Oman. And I wish many more years of prosperity and safety there. Honorable, respectable chief guest, Guest of Honours, President, Vice President, Central Council Member of Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, and Chairman and Exxon Members of Muscat Chapter. Thanks for inviting me to this launch, and in fact, it's a pleasure and an honour to be reconnected to the chapter after a very long time. I remember my first journey in GCC started with the beautiful city of Muscat, and uh, where I came in for to work on the analytics project uh, for the Army of Santalat of Oman. And thereafter, it has been good long 18, 19 years now that I have been coming and going into this GCC area and working for many. Uh, I just share my screen. Uh, okay, share is allowed. I hope you are able to see my screen. Okay, uh, coming to the subject, digital accounting and robot of process automation. Something which is always a talk of the world now. Everybody is talking. And the good sign of the COVID is people have started appreciating and liking the benefits of remote working and doing the things in an automated manner. Making the machine do the things for you. 
might be you could be in operations you could be in audit or you may be handling any management portfolio we have slowly gradually over in last seven eight months because of the conditions and situations are gradually getting more and more dependent on how can we utilize a machine how can we utilize a technology to our best benefit when we talk about all these things, we are basically talking about digital transformation, moving what we were doing sitting in office or with a manpower to a more of a manless and a digital environment. But I do hope we just move in business into the digital transformation and our social life and our relations do not get virtual on that. When we are talking about digital transformation, basically we are talking about four steps to it. Process mining. That means I have multiple processes within my ecosystems, within my bank, within my any organization that I work with. What, I, what are those departments or functions that can be put onto my digital transformation or that can be automated or for which I can make an RPA? I can make a robots into it. Please be very clear. The most important question is what you really want to do and why you want to do. I normally see in my career of almost 23 years with IT industry and as a professional, there has been a massive rush, a hurry to pick up anything, any way and just automate it. It is important that we sit, think that what are you planning to do? What are your expectations? And the most difficult and the important answer is to a question, why you want to do, what you want to achieve. If these two areas are addressed, you are able to identify the most critical things. You will be able to implement a very effective and efficient solution. Since most of us are here from the banking, if you recall, that long time back in 1984, when India's banking system started its journey to the automation, it was with a concept called computerization. And a national bank, which kicked off in 1984, it started with computerizing the branches. And there it says, I have manual books, manual ledgers. Let me just create an automated standalone system to do. We paid a huge cost in that process. Before we realized it has to be automated. There is a big gap of it. And when we are getting into this automation, it is important that we also understand what are we really going to monitor? Continuous monitoring. Yes, a lot of auditors around the world has been speaking for a lot many years now that audit wants to be, management wants to be on CCM, continuous control monitoring. I have more than 200 bank audit checks. Am I going to put everything into the CCM? You have to identify again here, what are your most critical lifelines, existing point for your bank, for your company, which if monitored can really give you a good control over the things. I give you a small example. We have so many things now running into a banking. We have online banking, we have got credit cards. We talk about KYC, know your customer. How am I doing my KYC? I have, the mem I have a banking form, my person comes to the branch, he opens, fills up the details, he gives some supporting evidence, and there, based on it, with this nice, beautiful photograph, I stamp it and open his account. And based on the information that he has given, that he has given under his signature, I agree to it that it is correct, and I proceed and allow him the banking. When I'm talking about continuous control monitoring, when I'm talking about KYC, in a banking perspective where I have core bankings, I would like to emphasize, I would like to do the KYC of the banking nature or a banking habit my customers have. We all over here on this session has a particular trend style of doing a bank. There would be certain times in the day where you will be doing online transactions and there would be a big time in the day where you will not even log in into your banking portal. When do you use your credit cards, debit cards? What is your volume of transaction? How much deposit, how much withdrawals you do? 
are there any foreign invert coming to you are you sending out any foreign remittances i basically perform those kind of detailed kycs out of that data and based on that i can come into ccm i give you a real time example and pardon me i won't name any banks working in middle east for it we have lot of advances loans given to the people by the bank individuals corporates there are people who take car loan housing loan festival loans education loans and there are people who are also guarantor of a company who has taken an advance from a bank now what we find in a bank we find in a bank there are multiple systems we have financial t24 imal post of system fns and different banking runs on the different system you have islamic banking running on the imal system you have some banks have t24 for co banking certain banks have financial for might be for card business or insurance business depending upon but there are multiple systems your system monitoring it on a continuous basis is should not be a very elementary level it should have an intelligence that is why we call it to be an rpa what kind of intelligence that if an individual has defaulted in his car loan house loan festival loan any kind of education loans he is a guarantor for my certain corporate advance the corporate applies me for additional advances or applies to extend the limit of their advances and the guarantors of those companies are a defaulter in their individual capacity would it be right that i continue advancing them that company but the guarantor itself is a bankrupt the system should be talking to each other when we are making a robots when we are making some kind of a process automation it should not be dependent upon a single thing it should be for the entire ecosystem i give you another example i think most of us over here are eminent auditors with lot of good history and you and it's indeed a proud the profession has done fantastic in its last 72 years of existence when we go and do certain kind of a system driven audits we are looking into certain things that are my transactions being done by the authorized people so normally the target of the management auditors or financial controllers cfos or whoever is there is that in my banking system i have certain segregation of duties they have been rightly programmed monitored and now there are solutions there are even grc solution which will do all your profile monitorings and would tell you a gm dgms managers assistant managers who has got what right are there anybody who is violating the rights and within that system it keeps monitoring we all are very happy i'm giving you this case study in year 2020 which i did in 2003 2004 when the sox was introduced in us what we did out over there we said fine your systems are well programmed sods are done do you know the person sitting in front of the computer is really that person who is logging in now that became a major issue how do we identify we have got password password means pass the word and everybody honors that terminology with passing the words i can give my rfid card to an employee and he will take and swipe my card and he will say thank you bye bye i will log in and i will process all the things nobody will exceed the sod segregation of duties of the system so that the alert is not generated but genuinely that person is not doing the right thing because he is not the right person he is not the real person who is authorized to do it how do we monitor it these are the areas which are more critical if you are planning a ccm just to find out within a fraction of seconds how many employees have logged into my computer who are physically neither in the office nor virtually from home also working but that login id has been used and that gives you the trigger what's happening i give you another simple audit check for it try doing it out check out from because when we are in the bank we and we are in any organization which is highly connected and automated all the computers in the network system have the unique ip numbers try to perform a small check how many ip numbers have a multiple login on the same day 
one system should technically be logged in with one user ID. But do you find frequent login, logout, login, logout, and the login logouts are different? So Mr. A logs out and he logs in with Mr. B on the same machine. These are the small, small things which really helps you to monitor and control and can get you onto it. I would like to speak about predictive analytic case study for a bank a little ahead of my presentation. Then we have governances, we have the risk compliances. Yes, there are good technologies. Now you don't need a workflow, manual things. You can automate, you can push your audit reports, audit comments, follow-ups, everything onto the GRCs. And GRC, except doing your audit management, can do many more things today. And once we have reached the level three, we have got our continuous monitoring, predictive, normal audits, everything automated. We have all the workflows, everything on the GRC. Now we think of, can I go for an RPE? And these are the steps, if followed diligently, you will surely come out with a very effective and efficient methodology of transforming yourself digitally. Analytics plays a vital role, whether you do RPE, or you do data analytics, audit analytics, operations analytics, with any kind of a name. Analytics is nothing but analyzing the data from the, your perspective, what exactly do you want to see? A small example, I would like to see duplicate customer. Very good. You can open any tool, any technology. I'm not here to speak about any tool or names. I'm not going to support any one of them. I'm just being neutral on technology. You can pick up any technology and you can say, find the duplicates on my customer names, duplicate on the addresses, everything. What purpose does it serve you? It gives you a long list and say, these are the duplicates. Now, what if you start adding a business value to it? Now you would wonder, a duplicate customer could be what business value? I would love to add, this duplicate customer has how many types of bank accounts? What is a banking transaction is this person doing? How many times is he doing cash withdrawals? Is he transferring fund to the suspicious countries of the world? Is there an abnormal foreign exchange coming to this account and getting disbursed locally? Or is there a considerable huge foreign exchange going out from this account? And the multiple accounts are used. Might be the transactions are split it out so that our multiple accounts are used out and it does not get into a high value parameter, but the person has successfully done his job. A small change in a spelling, M-O-H-D, or M-O-H-A-M-M-E-D, A-D, can make your multiple accounts. A simple E-A, or in an Indian names, we have G-O-E-L, G-O-Y-L, a simple Agarwal with double G and a single G, Neeraj with N I and N double E can really create a good threat for you. People do say it's a very simple and a very stupid and a very old kind of methodology to look for duplicates. But if you start linking it with a business impacts, it starts making sense to you. When I'm trying to build out certain analytics, I always go and ask the person, what do you want? He will say, I want these kind of 20 things in the bank. I want to see whether the critical information of the account holders is there or not. Advances are as per the norms given or not. And I say, thanks, what, what you want to achieve. And when it comes, what do you want to achieve? The benefit of it is that answer to the why will give you the direction to which data you want to pick up or you should pick up. And that's where it becomes important base for you. Now, whatever you may move, you may move to predictive analytics. You want to do continuous controls. You want to do real-time things. Data becomes the most vital part for you to analyze out. When we talk about continuous, yes, there are a few areas where, yes, your analytics can help you out in the banks. We could look into retail, branch, advances, consumer, corporate, IT security and controls. And if you see to them everything, at the base of it, of all these department, I always recommend and suggest to my people that please follow your access analytics, user access, how many people are practically coming into. I give you an example, which is not, as we have said, we are in 2020, but in early 2000, I was working in Singapore for almost four to five years. 
And at that time, I was at one of the client place and they said, we have biometric login security. And that time, India and many great other countries were also on the RFID plastic cards. That particular office was on biometric. I said, I want to meet the chief internal auditor. And I was given out an access on the thumb impression. I gave it on the counter. I was not given any visitor pass. Nothing was asked out of me. The person just took my thumb impression and took a possession of my ID card. On the thumb impression, I was surprised. He said, you will be able to go only to the chief internal auditors and any other access to this premises, you will not be allowed. And I said, if I want to go to a washroom, he says, don't worry. Our system intelligently has allowed you the nearest washroom to the person whom you are meeting. You want to have a coffee, the cafeteria nearest to that person is also being allowed for you. And I was amazed. And when I walked in, I could, I tried all the best as typical, you know, Indians always try to do the other side to see how Jugaad can help you out to do something which you should not do. Yes, even the lift did not allow me to go to any other floor except to that person's floor whom I'm there to meet. Your IT security controls, how do you really plan? Things are there in the market. Solutions are there. It's only to plan, think, and then organize them. I'm not getting into the list of it. It's just a suggestion. I would surely share it out. Now, this is a very important thing. How do I really achieve what I just said in the last couple of minutes to you? We don't just straight away jump to the fifth level. My dear, you need to start with your basics. Let's understand what would be the best methodology or practice for it. The best way, if you want to really go for a right digital transformation, would be what you are doing today, manually or on an Excel or anything where it is manually dependent. List out all those activities. They are your basic day-to-day -day working. Now at that level, which is level one, I would always propose that you should try to automate that part. Stabilize it. Test it out in multiple variations. And once you find, yes, you have done it correctly, you are getting a right thing. I move to level two is then I apply department wise. I never suggest to do everything over the entire bank. Start with your one by one departments. When you have applied it in the third level is the managing. Have you built enough resources who can manage? You might think these kind of automations could generate out unemployment. I beg to differ. It will not bring unemployment, but it will surely force the employment to upgrade, learn the right things. Please don't sit saturated. Okay, for last 10 years, 15 years, I'm doing this job. My job is secured. I need not worry. I'm happy to see this, the way Chartered Accountant Institute is progressing, the digitalization coming to what it was when I did a CA. So there is a continuous thing. My father, who is also an old member of the Institute, he said, I did a CA and I could live my whole life. Today, I be CA, I have to do a couple of more degrees to survive. So you have to really upgrade your manpower. With all those knowledges, you need to manage it. Managing is not that easy. There should be your internal workforce who should be capable, trained, and supported. And once you have achieved those kind of level three, you move to, now I move to the area level four, which I say automation. I started from my basic, gradually matured that basic, and now once I have my basic matured, I move to automate it and say, now let me see how much can I really bring out from the system? How much a system can start doing things for me? And without me being awake or into that, it should automatically keep pinging me. I give you an example, a small example of an Indian banking that we worked out. And when there was a demonetization happening, that's a place where analytics at the back of the stage was playing a big role identifying where there a bank with whom we worked out they said can you generate me a system which every 15 minutes every 15 minutes on the map of my city will keep on giving me red yellow green lights where the atm is going to dry out which denomination of the currency is getting withdrawn in which area 
and where I'm really going to land up into a problem because my positioning of my vans dispersal is like this and I need at least 30 to 45 minutes to make sure I have the people there with the currency to fill up the ATMs. When I have done those things, yes, this is an automated intelligence where the system or the robots are working. And as a manager on the fifth level, what you are doing, you are seeing the entire life on your laptop or the mobile phones, and you are monitoring your situation and taking a decision. And that's where you, I say that you have really matured with the tool. And now the tool is doing the things for you and you are taking a decision about it. Okay, now when we come to RPA, that's where I said analytics is a basic, which is very important for everything. RPA, Robotop Process Automation. It's a fantastic terminology of 21st century. Everybody's crazy about it. What does it mean? We have seen car manufacturing. Now we have robots over there. We hardly have the manpower. And right from the start of your making of the car till it's finishing, everything is being done by those huge robots in the factory, which knows when what is to be done. I found an Indian RPA way back when I was doing a bank audit in 1997 in the city of Pune, where I saw a cotton thread manufacturing plant with 600 looms and only five people, totally automated and an export oriented unit. RPA is where the system is being intelligent enough to understand right from the beginning till the end, what all has to be done. I give you a small example of an RPA. I will just continue my previous example. As I said, you have IT security, you need to check access control. If my RPA for monitoring my employees access control is in place, the moment Mr. A logs out and he logs in with Mr. B, my system will not say your password is correct or wrong. My password will tell him, hello, number one, Mr. B does not have this particular laptop or desktop associated to him or allocated to him. Number two, Mr. B is absent today. Are you sure you are Mr. B? He stops it over there. Your system and control should not be always coming as a post event and like a police and coming and finding out the things. RPAs are intelligent that would prevent any mishap happening. And it would say, yes, boss, that's right. Another example, now we have mobiles, we have GPS, everything is there. Today, we can be monitored for even a movement of 50 meters to 100 meters from our current position very easily. The datas are available 24 into 7 without our vision will it is happening. Whether you use WhatsApp, you use Skype, you use Zoom or anything. We normally have a banker saying, if you have lost your credit cards or debit card, please call this number and report immediately. We will block you. I said, okay, good. That is one part. I will surely inform them if I've lost or I've broken it. I'm sitting in Kuram in Muscat. My bank headquarters has an ATM in the sieve. I have lost my credit card or a debit card. My GPS location is Quorum and somebody in the sieve at the same time is inserting my debit credit card at the ATM. I think I could have an RPA to tell, sorry, Mr. B, you don't appear to be Mr. A, the card that you are using. You can have a system that could then generate an alert which will be integrating with the customer complaint and the customer would immediately come to know there is somebody in C who is using your this particular reported debit card which you have reported to be lost and we find that your gps location is not matching to it so we are reporting to you and then you could have an internal alerts going to all the places you can really nab the person that's the way i say we need to first strategize what exactly we want to do there are complex system around us and we have to integrate them with intelligence, not just converting what I'm doing manually to an automated is not an RPA. There are multiple areas in a banking that I could think of to looking into RPA like automated report generations for your compliances, boarding the customers, KYC. My KYC is not document KYC as a profession. I always talk about KYC as the how my account holders does the banking. 
anti money laundering opening mortgage loan processing i've given enough example of how can i do it on this rps now before i move on i just like to show you i know the paucity of the time uh, that i have with my hand let me show you some of the basic things or uh, just to keep some excitement also it's important in a virtual environment that's a challenge let me just show you a simple rpa of an arabic chatbot or a documentation also to you uh, mr chairman i hope i have 10 minutes to go yes yes sure sure yes okay please feel free if you find me off track or something i am happy to reorganize myself okay now i'm going to show you a small demo on the documentation rpa now what is this this is a demo to show you a simple process of procurement department we have a concept of rfps in the rfp when we issue an rfp there are host of vendors that apply to banks and saying these are our proposals and then your procurement department sit down and then they what they start doing is they're reading the proposal making out a jur report that is a joint evaluation report putting all the data and everything from those documents after reading it into a excel file or a word file and then doing the manual comparison it takes a long time as i said i have a wonderful experience with gcc and yes these processes really take a long time which runs into few months after the rfp is done and finally vendor selected order given and it really hurts the business can i do this basic kind of an rpa that means my system should be intelligent as a user i would say this is my box where i have all my proposals these are the keywords on which i want to i can even define my own keywords i would like to have the gross price i would like to have the vat i'd like to know the material code i need to know the payment terms i need to know does he want any advance or when he would like to have the payment i can define my keywords give it to it because it's again a robot you have to tell what you want him to do and then he would generate that report for you can that be possible okay let's see a small demo for that okay so what happen is this is what has been done manually but the same thing you can even do something called scheduling i can schedule my task i can say at this date at this time i want to perform certain task and the system becomes that intelligent to perform for you how does the art artificial intelligence architecture or even rpa we also at times call it an ai artificial intelligence also in the system work it out in any typical bank you will have multiple source of the data available to you those data sources are being connected using mostly the odbc or there are certain connectors that are available but what we have seen in the bank like t24 financial imals 
using OTBC drivers, we could do that connection. It is always advisable within the bank, you have your on-premises servers where all your tools, all your data is residing. Whatever you are extracting it out on a real-time event, you can do a real-time extraction. Today, there are technologies which can process up to almost 5 million records per second speed. 5 million records per second is tremendously huge. And if you have a proper infrastructure, you could just put in all the data at your central repository. Professionally and technically, we do not recommend that you should put all the processing on the real production databases because there are other operations and things running in your system. From the, your central repository where you have pulled in all the data based on what kind of queries, whether you could have your outsourced team company supporting you or you have your internal people, could be your auditors, audit departments, outsource and your stakeholders. They all get connected to this on a web based. People are today moving to cloud. You have any cloud platform, whether it is Microsoft or it's uh, AWS, Oracles, it can run these kind of solutions, can easily run on them. These are very light solution. They can be effectively even controlled from your smartphones, whether you have Apple or Android based applications. And based on how do you want to see an output, you could have even something called an smart dashboards. I could have an, instead of an Excel file and looking into the numbers, I can even play around with my smart dashboard to it. And at the back, the RPA is doing the job of regularly populating my dashboard. Frequency could be as good as even 15 minutes. You could have every 15 minutes things happening. Let me show you some of uh, ex example of those smart dashboard. So this is a example which could run into multiple. So I'm not going to go you outside of banking. Suppose I want to do a banking thing. I could be running this on my laptop or I could be running this on my mobile phones. I could program what all departments or banking I want to automate as an RPA. It could be advances, loan disbursement, KPIs, invalid loans, revenue analysis, customer aging, or you just want to have a tool tip of your overall banking. What is my banking numbers like your balance sheet numbers, how many customers, what is the total deposit, total advance, what is my net profit or loss? how many NPS, I could have a tool tip which will give my banking's larger number. So as a user, I just click on the advances over here and this particular dashboard will give me a flexibility. Okay, you have these many branches which are being programmed. Now, this not only goes for one bank, even if you have like a CBO, in the CBO, they could even monitor multiple banks instead of branches, for them, there it would be multiple banks. Based on the parameters, it you can have the user's flexibility to understand and design, okay, what you want to have. I could have a filter based on the branches. I could have it on the borrower's name. And at the bottom, I could have my details. I could have my, if there is a date of restructuring, when was the loan sanctioned, when was it restructured, what is the outstanding amount, how much is the provision held. I could have my vital critical things listed out here. I could see over here, I have certain bank officer. I could also see how many bank officers are giving, getting me what kind of customers for advances. And for those bank officers, what is a position? Is he giving me a good customer or is he giving me a bad customer? Your RPA could give an alert based on these kind of KYC of your bank employees. That if that person comes out and say, I have a proposal for a million Omani Real for a manufacturing uh, oil based company to set up over here. Are we there for this advance? The system can give you out and say, please be careful. Normally we do not find it moving further with this guy's accounts are good. We have so much of NPAs, we have so much of provisions. Please be careful and do a deeper due diligence. So system alerts you out. And yes, there are a lot of activities outside the system that a person need to perform when he looks into all those things. So that's a way I can create out and make my smart dashboard as a part of the RPS. So, so far, any question by anyone? Okay, just to know about some, uh, if anybody can also unmute and say, have you ever seen out an Arabic chatbot? Has anybody experienced out? No, from my end. No. Okay, let's see. Can an RPA help you out in the Arabic chatbot? Let's see that part. 
how does an arabic chatbot normally talks i think the presentation audio is not there uh, nishit ji audio is not Now, what can happen when you are doing this kind of a chat also? If any customer coming to you and asking you that I want to open an account, your RPA can be further mature to tell that should you be allowing this person to open more accounts based on the performance and the history of the previous account the same customer holds with your bank. And the bank can identify at that point that this person is now getting his children into the banking system and if this is not a healthy or a good account holder for me i should not allow the further account opening i might like to generate an internal alert may not like to show to the customer that i'm not interested in this customer but i can show a security alert to the respected people and then the people can take an action then how to handle out this customer we have a sky as a limit when we talk about building robots it's a journey that has really started now and finance and technology both the guys are going to have a tough time because we have to do a lot and really the time is squeezing out thank you very much chairman musker chapter for this opportunity if you have any question i shall surely try to answer it thank you very much thank you thank you very much uh, nishit ji for your uh, you know wonderful presentation and insights of uh, you know uh, new technology and digital accounting and uh, robotic process automation where we are all heading for the new dashboard new decision making we are moving from the you know old uh, accounting to the new strategic uh, decision making uh, you know uh, path thank you very much now i request uh, sajeev to to take take the proceedings for any the... any question uh any questions from the members can be addressed any questions so can we move on yep um uh, uh, uh you can felicitate uh, sir c nishit ji with a e certificate okay thank you very much uh, nishit ji on behalf of the muskat chapter and college of banking and financial studies it is gives a great pleasure and honor to present you this e certificates for this uh, historic launch of uh, you know digital learning hub of to the cbfs by ica new delhi thank you very much uh, chairman sir and before i just uh, go i can i just say one small thing i missed out while i yes. was explaining certain cases the most important is could you are planning training programs my suggestion would be out of my experience we need to have practical training programs we need to get the professionals industry together who has been with the experience with the data what is really happening in the world and you have to bring that real world in your training lab 
and then it will make out a lot of value for every member and the user to it. The training, your practical trainings are going to play a vital role. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we look forward to see you the practical session, uh, you know, going forward. And we will, uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Anis Alawati has rightly uh, said, we will have a joint session on the practical training for this one is on this, uh, you know, uh, robotic process automation soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Pr Prabhuji. Now I request CA Sanil Vargis to offer a formal vote of thanks. Hello. Yeah. I will straight away come into the, the, the word of thanks uh, event. First of all, let me thank H.H. Uh, Tahir Salim Al Amri, Executive uh, President, Central Bank of Oman for being the chief guest and addressing us today. Secondly, we have uh, our ambassador, H.E. Manu Mahavar, uh, who has been a constant support to us. Thank you, sir, for being with us today. And uh, Dr. Kalfan Al Barwani, Vice President, CBO, and Chair, Chair, Chairman, CBFS, for being with us today. As well as uh, I would uh, thank uh, Mr. Anis Al Lavati, Acting Dean, CBFS, as well as uh, Dr. Rajesh, as well as other team of CBFS for their constant support for all our endeavors. I thank our President, uh, CA Atul Kumar Gupta, as well as uh, Vice President, CA Nihar Niranjan. Jambus, Jambus Saria, for being with us and addressing us today. CA Anil Anit uh, Anitket uh, Talati for his uh, what you call uh, initiative in launching uh, the the what you call the learning forum today, as well as uh, CA Nishit said for his wonderful keynote address and enriching uh, each one of us on this uh, this morning thank you everybody and thank you for the members for the time and for their attendance hope everybody has a nice session uh, see you can we have uh, can we on everybody the uh, for a for a photo session yes video is on the video let us have a group photograph for a photo session Yeah, done? Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you all. You. Thank you very much. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. 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 Sanil Varghizji, thank you, Nishit Sidi. Thank you, one and all. Stay safe. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum. Jazakallah khair, inshallah.